everyone, welcome back to Together We Are Thursday. This week's topic is um, self-worth, how to improve your self-worth, and five positive attributes about yourself. My little Ailey is down here playing with leaves, so I apologize for all the noise. <laughs> She's so cute. Little leaf dog. Little leaf dog. She loves playing with her leaves. Don't you, silly? Yeah. You're very cute. Boy, is she growing. Okay, so, um, this is the disadvantage of being at the end of the week. All of the other um, team members have made phenomenal videos. And I'm not totally confident I can add much useful information, but I will share um, two things that have really helped me. Um, I think I think Georgina Broadway mentioned this, in a, or it may have been Michelle. Actually, Michelle, I think, was saying, um, don't be afraid to go to your friends. That's so true. Like, there will be a time where you will sit and try and think, and you won't be able to think of a single thing. Or, like, our drummer had to use items from treatment because she didn't feel anything positive that day. Um, which, by the way, was a cop-out. Don't do that again, bad girl. Um, but yeah, um, so everybody had great suggestions, but um, two things I would add is make a list of your good qualities and if you have trouble kind of go back over your life and imagine you're writing an autobiography and go through your years and what happened this year did i do anything cool or you know do you have an old art project from school that you love that you made or maybe you um wrote a cool paper or you know just different things in your life that are examples of good qualities within you, or what is something really generous you did, or um, when was the, you know when somebody has been very grateful to you, what was it for, kind of thing. Um, so that can be really helpful for reinforcing good qualities. Um, interestingly, what brought this idea to me is I received a letter from a friend of mine, and she was having a very bad day. Um, and was just venting that she was very triggered and just not in a good place with her ED. And she wrote this long descriptive of, like, um, I've accomplished this, I speak this many languages, you know, I have done this, I do that. I, you know, like, wrote down basically a ton of beautiful, true, positive attributes that she has. Um, and at the end said something like, um, I'm, I, it's, you know, maybe I'm writing this down so that I see it, because it doesn't seem real. And I think that happens a lot in our distorted minds, where things don't seem real, like, for me, a lot of my reflection on accomplishments is years ago, and I tend to struggle with feeling that I am useful at all to society anymore, because... I'm disabled by my illness, I don't work, I don't go to school anymore, so all of my achievements, you know, are history, long history. I mean, I, in November of 2001, it's been 10 years since I left school, it's been 10 years, and I, I have a husband that I love and adore, and I take pride in that. I know that he values my love, uh, and I love my animals, and I love being a part of this channel and reaching out to other sufferers, and hopefully, having been a veteran of this screwed up, sordid path for this many years, I have some sort of wisdom to impart. But it's hard. It's definitely hard. But remember, your old accomplishments are not negated by time. Like, when I listen to other people talk about, like, what they're doing in university, I always feel so inadequate. There's this inadequacy. Now, I have to remember that I don't have my health, and when I did, I was able to do a lot more. Well, mental illnesses count to you guys, okay? You're living with chronic, chronic illnesses, too. And you can't do as much as everyone else all the time. 
and I know your ED likes to tell you you can and you need to be a superhero, but you're human. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay not to be doing the absolute best, greatest, most extraordinary thing all the time. I think a huge thing, too, to work on is give yourself credit for things. We are so hard on ourselves. And if you can extract the critical negative self-talk and, you know, I talk about, like, empathic uh, exercises where, okay, imagine that you are talking to a dear friend when you talk to yourself. Would you say these things to somebody you love? Would you have compassion for somebody you love if they didn't do as well as maybe, you know, you would expect yourself to do? And why? Why is there a difference? Why are you less than or why are you under different rules than everybody else that you love and care for? It's not good. Like, you need to resist the urge to belittle, demean, and attack yourself. You know? Your eating disorder has one goal, and that goal is to take your life period, in every way, shape, and form it can, and that's something we all need to remember, 24-7. So, okay, five positive attributes about me. Um, I am a good writer, like people tell me, and I'm, like, proud of my ability to articulate things in writing. Um, I'm really good with animals. Um, I've been loving them all my life and started like becoming the little rescue person for you know injured wild creatures in the neighborhood and stuff and i love my birds and my dogs and, yeah um three i love to bake and i'm good at it um this is something that crimson butterfly girl mentioned um i love it i love it i love it i love it and i have um a few recipes up and um it's not doing very well because we haven't been paying much haven't been nurturing it very much but there is an ED community recipe site um, so if you guys have any recipes and any kind that you think are um, like that you're excited about or think are delicious um, let me know and I can put them up on that site so we can have my content on there okay so is that three um, four I'm a very loving and devoted wife um, I can't do all of the physical things that I wish I could, but I know that I am very loyal, loving, and devoted, and, um, you know, take good care of my husband emotionally and physically, and I do my best to do that. Um, and I know he appreciates it. Both of us came from bad relationships in the past, so we're very grateful and no different, and I think that's a huge factor in us staying close and staying in love, um, People call us the eternal puppy lovers because we're still, like, just sickeningly sweet and affectionate and stuff. So, that's a good thing about me. Um, and the last thing, I am so full of love and compassion for others. And it makes me feel good when I can impart comfort to somebody else. So, I think... You know, I'm a good listener, and I'm definitely able to relate to others, and also, not only with sympathy, but empathy, having, you know, not only empathy, you know, being able to put myself in someone else's place, but sympathy too, because I've been through a lot of really bad things in my life, and I can relate and possibly impart some wisdom on how better to cope with that. So that's my video, um, I'm not sure who's picking the next topic, but Michelle will let us know, she's the guru leadership person and uh, much love I hope all of you have a great weekend and remember always if you have questions or suggestions or anything um, that you'd like us to cover let us know we'd be happy to do that for you be well precious ones take care of yourselves